Personal notice, changes my stock and trade. If the job's too tough for you to handle, you've got a job for me, George Valentine. Write full details. Standard Oil Company of California invites you to Let George Do It. Before we begin tonight's adventure, George Valentine, I'd like to remind you that the oil in your car needs to be changed regularly to keep your engine clean and cut down on those repair bills. So don't neglect this important job. Let car savers drain your crankcase and fill it with fresh, heavy-duty RPM, the motor oil that reduces engine wear and greatly increases the time between overhauls. If you're overdue, stop in tomorrow for a complete oil change at any independent Chevron gas station or standard station where they say and mean we take better care of your car. Cae Raposo, a transcribed adventure of George Valentine. Dear Mr. Valentine, for a man who advertises that danger is his stock in trade, the assignment I have in mind may possibly turn out to be a bit tame. On the other hand, you may suddenly find yourself full of lead. I estimate you can handle the job in about 48 hours, if all goes well. In that time, you'll travel over 6,000 6, miles. miles and complete a business transaction that, unfortunately, I can't handle myself. I'll expect you at my office tomorrow afternoon. George? Mm, what, Brooks? We're going on a trip to someplace more than 3,000 miles away. What do you mean, we? Besides, I'm not particularly interested in going to New York. Darling, it couldn't be New York. It's more than 3,000 miles away, and the man says it might be dangerous. You didn't finish the letter. Who sent it? Oh, uh, Thomas Jefferson Moore, President, Western Tobacco Company. Thomas Center. Jefferson Moore? Yes, do you know him, George? Only by reputation, big cigar manufacturer, millionaire sportsman. Oh. Well, then I... Guess you'd better be a sport and take the job. Huh? Now, why would Thomas Jefferson Moore want me to complete a business transaction for him? I don't know, darling. But it does sound a little bit exciting, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, it does. Well, I guess I'd better go see the big shot and find out what kind of a deal it is. Uh-uh. What do you mean, uh-uh? I mean, we'll go see Mr. Moore. And if you don't fix it so I can make the trip too, George, all Valentine, right, I'm... All right, Angel, all right. We'll go see Mr. Moore. <laughs> This whole thing's very simple, Valentine. I'll brief you, then you make your plans. So uh, what am I supposed to do? There's a man in Havana, Santos Orlego, big plantation operator. Has a large amount of very excellent tobacco I wish to buy. You'll go there and close the deal. But, Mr. Moore, why can't you buy it by mail or a radiogram or telephone? Simply because it's being sold at auction, Miss Brooks. Well, that makes sense. But why can't you go to Havana and bid on it yourself if it's that important? Because... I prefer to keep my health. I'm afraid I don't follow you. I didn't think you would. In this city, there's a certain uh, gentleman, I use the word extremely loosely, a gentleman by the name of Ran Hubbard. Oh, he's a racketeer or something, isn't he? I believe that's one description. Except that, for the purposes of the moment, he's calling himself a tobacco broker. He figures to buy the same lot. But he can't stop you from bidding against him. Uh, not directly, no. However, I have it on good authority, no less than one of Hubbard's henchmen, that if I go to Havana on this deal, I stand the chance of having my life abruptly ended. I don't relish that thought. Mm -hmm. I see what you mean. If anybody's going to be bumped off, you'd rather it be me. <laughs> I can see you're a young man with rare insight, Mr. Valentine. Now, you will travel United Delta National to Miami. Your plane leaves at 10.55 this evening. You mean... Our plane, don't you, Mr. Moore? What? Uh, yes, I rather anticipated that remark, Miss Brooks. All right. Transportation for both of you. Expenses, of course, and double your daily fee, Valentine. You had better cable for reservations at the National. Best hotel in Havana. You seem to take it for granted, Mr. Moore, that I'm willing to have people take pot shots at me. Well, who'd take pot shots at you? Hubbard's men would know you represent me. Unless, of course, they should happen to jump at conclusions. Yeah, it's all very cozy. I hope so. Also, they won't know that you have in your pocket my signed check with the amount left blank. No, of course they won't know that. What did you say? That's taking a pretty long chance, isn't it, Mr. Moore? 
I could fill in that check for anything I liked. I could ruin you. I could also stop payment on the check, couldn't I? Uh, yeah, I guess you could. Uh, Mr. Valentine will take the job, Mr. Moore. The plane leaves at 10.55, you say? That's right. Oh, and, uh, Valentine, uh, don't bid over $85,000 on the tobacco. That's as high as I go. Suppose Hubbard's man goes higher. He won't. If he did, he'd lose money on the deal. Hubbard wouldn't like that any more than I would. I see. Well, I still... I'll wire me as soon as the deal's closed, Valentine, or have Miss Brooks do it for you. Oh, uh... Here's the blank check. And another one for $2,000. Expenses and so on. Well, now, just a minute. That's all. Good afternoon, Mr. Valentine. Mr. Brooks. But look, Come I... Come on, George. There isn't much time, and we have to pack. Fasten your seatbelt, please. Fasten your seatbelt. We are now arriving at Rancho Villeros Airport. Passengers for Havana may take the bus to the aero car. Oh, Stuart. Oh, yes, Mr. Valentine. How long does it take to get into town from the airport? It's 30 minutes, sir. Have you reservations at a hotel? Yes, we've made reservations at the National. Well, then you won't have any trouble. The bus stops there when it gets in the city. Okay, thanks. Not at all, Mr. Valentine. Fasten seat belts, please. We are now arriving at Havana. Oh, Senor Valentine. Hmm. Now, how'd you know my name? <laughs> but, Senor, twice the young lady said it. Oh, yeah, I'd forgotten what can I do for you? Uh, perhaps the point is, what can I do for you, senor? Well, what do you mean? I mean, senorito, that I know senor Valentine's mission here. You see, I boarded the plane at Miami at the request of uh, senor Moore. Oh. See, si, see. Si. I am to be a sort of bodyguard for you. I am to help you as much as possible. Yeah. Well, now, that's very nice of you. And Mr. Moore. And so I suggest that when we land at Rancho Boyeres, we see Miss Brooks on the aero car bus. Uh, then I will arrange for an auto and we will drive on to uh, a place where we will meet Senor Orlego. Look, Buster, that doesn't quite make sense. As I understand it, Orlego is holding a tobacco auction and it's not until tomorrow morning. You see, you see, you are quite right about that. But uh, as I understand the matter, it's quite possible to make, uh, shall we say... Indeed. But Mr. Moore didn't tell us anything about that. Hey, naturally, senorita. He uh, had his reasons. Well, senor, shall I arrange for a car? No, no, I think not, my friend. I was given my instructions. I believe I'll play along just as I was told before I left the States. Eh? Just as you wish. I see you do not trust me, eh? Eh, I suppose I do not blame you, senor, but uh, one thing. Yeah. If you should need me, I will not be very far away. You may just leave a message at the desk of your hotel. Uh, I will be there immediately. Mm-hmm. Well, now, that's very nice of you, Mr. Uh... Uh, my name is Miguel. I will see you when we have arrived in Havana, senor. Yeah, yeah, okay. And it looks as though we're just about in. Come on, Brooksy, let's be ready to take that bus to the hotel. <laughs> Yeah, who is it? Me, George. Oh, wait a second, Brooksy. Yeah, what is it, Angel? What's happening? That's what I came to your room to find out. Oh, what do you mean? Come on in. Oh, thanks, George. Hey, look, what's this all about? Why the mystery? Hasn't anyone been here, darling? No, no, I've just been relaxing. Figured on getting dressed for dinner in a few minutes. George, a girl called me in my room on the phone. Her name is Rosa Sintado. Uh-huh, what about it? She wanted to know if a man named Miguel had come to see you since we arrived. Me- Hey, that's the guy who talked to us on the plane. Yeah, I know. Well, why didn't this girl call me instead of you? And what does she say about this, Miguel? Just that he's crooked, works for Rand Hubbard, and that she's found out he's supposed to get you before you go to that auction tomorrow. Yeah, that guy did sound like a phony. Well, it's a good thing I didn't fall for his gag and go with him. But where does this Rosa fit in the picture? She happens to be secretary to Santa Sarlega, that's all. Oh, I see. But I still can't figure out why she didn't call me. She's afraid that Miguel person might be in your room, and she also said she was going to see you. Listen, Angel, why should she see me? Her boss is auctioning off some tobacco. I'm supposed to bid on it. It's as simple as that. If the opposition thinks... Yeah, who is it? Senor Valentine? Yeah. It is Rosa, senor. Would you please to let me come in? Rosa, who are you? George, did she say Rosa? Yeah. Well, that's her Lego secretary. Oh. I am secretary to senor... Yeah, yeah, I know. I understand. Just a second. Senor Valentine. Wow. Please come in. George. Uh, yeah, that's right. 
May I come in? Huh? Well, yes, please do. Gracias. <clears throat> now, uh, Senor just... Valentine, you are in danger. I am? See, si. you... You are here on the business transaction for a senior more in these states, no? Well, uh, suppose I am. My employer knows all about it, of course. But he also knows that another person by the name of Hubbard is determined to stop you. Is yes, that so? Well... Even if he has to kill you. Oh, I see. Well, I'm afraid your senior Hubbard is still in the States. But and, uh... still in the States is not a man named Miguel. George, I told you this girl called oh, Wait a minute. Me. Let me get this straight. What exactly does your boss want me to do? He does not like violence, senor. He does not like bloodshed. He wants you to be safe until the auction tomorrow. Well, I've got to agree with his sentiments, but I still don't know why you're here. Who's to take you to my employer, senor Valentine? He does not like this other man, this, this Hubbard. He wishes to protect you. I am to take you to him at once. Well, that's very nice of him, but I still George, don't... I think we'd better do what she says. Let's go with uh, him. Not... You, senorita. No? We cannot all go. Too many of us would excite suspicion. I am to take Senor Valentine to my employer alone. Oh, hey, now, Marcia's wait a minute. Oh, she's right, we... Brooksy. You go to your room, lock yourself in. I'll go spend the night with Senor Arlego. See you in the morning at the auction. But, George, suppose something happens to you while you're making your bid. I imagine Arlego will take pretty good precautions against that. So get some sleep, yeah. Angel, and I'll see you in the morning. All right, Rosa, let's go. Ah, uh, Rosa. Si, sí, senor. You're a very good driver. <laughs> Gracias. But you were going to take me to see Orlego. See, sí, that is right. I happen to know enough about Havana to be sure we're in the old city. <laughs> You do not understand. I guess I don't. Understand what? Senor Lego was a very, oh, um, oh, what do you call, um, yes, eccentric man. <laughs> Is that the right word in English? Sounds right, but how does it figure... When that... he could live anywhere in Havana, he still likes to live in the old city. You mean, or Lego lives here? Si, sí, senor. Cayo Reposo, el numero once. I hear. Cayo Reposo, eh? Okay. I see nobody. We can go in. Okay, all right. But for a big tobacco planter, I can't Hurry, see... Hurry, senor. All right, all right. But if there's nobody around... One cannot tell when someone is waiting in the shadows. Here. Here. This this is the place. You live here, too? See, si. On the second floor, I have an apartment. My employer will take care of you, senor, until the auction time. After that... What could happen after that? Nothing, senor, of course. Uh, here he is, senor Alego. I have brought senor Valentine, as you told me. Uh, come in, come in. Si? You know, Alego, I can't quite understand all this, but it's pretty decent of you. Now, wait a minute, yo, Miguel. <laughs> si, senor. This girl told me that... Hey, I'm getting out of here. What this girl told you is for your own good, senor. As my guest, you will step into the next room. Please. Where's Arlego? I have no idea. On his plantation, I suppose. Then what am I doing here? Out of the way, Buster. Rosa, please stand back. Huh? Our guest does not seem to be interested in staying. You're darn right I don't. If you think you can keep me I here... I feel very sure that I can, Senor Valentine. Like this. Oh, yeah. oh. Now, Rosa. See. Si. We shall take him to his room, lock him in, and you will keep the key. We'll return to tonight's adventure of George Valentine in just a moment. Maybe you've already found out how easy it is to forget to have your car lubricated every 1,000 miles and how hard it is to pay unnecessary repair bills. But the two go together. Forget the lubrication, and more often than not, you end up with trouble. One good solution is to have your car lubricated regularly at any independent Chevron gas station or standard station. These car savers give guaranteed lubrication. They keep a record of your car and remind you when service is due. Car savers have the lubricants and the know-how to do the best job on your car. They're guided by an approved chart which assures complete point-by-point -point lubrication. Best of all, they take the time to do the work right. Check every fitting to be sure it's lubricated 
inspect transmission and differential level, and all in all, you can be sure of the very best in lubrication service when you turn the job over to car savers. So if you're due for service now, why not stop in real soon and get car saver guaranteed lubrication at any standard station or independent Chevron gas station, for they say and mean we take better care of your car. It's a simple assignment, traveling to Cuba to bid in a desirable lot of tobacco. At least it seems that way until you find yourself held prisoner in a dingy house in the old city of Havana, probably to keep you from being present at the auction. If your name is George Valentine, when you come out of your knockout haze in a room on the Calle Raposo, you begin trying to figure angles. Oh, where is it? Oh, yeah, remember. Miguel, Rosa. Oh, brother, I better see about this. Oh. Hello. Hello, hello. Hey, let me out of here. I'll knock this door down. I would not advise you to do that, senor. Huh? That's Rosa, isn't it? Si, si. Well, look, how long do you think a man can get along without a drink of water? Oh, I do not know, senor Valentine. Maybe uh, a long time. Yeah, I suppose so. But I, uh, I sort of figured you for a girl who wasn't that tough. You couldn't bring me a glass of water, I suppose. Oh, see, I might. Yeah, I know, but don't bother. The same thing's happened to me before. I get interested in a girl, she turns out to be a heel, just like you did. Now, uh, please don't do me any favors. George. Yeah? I am, I am not like you say, a heel. That's so? See? You know... I figured you for somebody I might, uh, but, uh, never mind. Might, might what? Oh, I said never mind. But, Senorita Brooks? Oh, she's my secretary, my assistant, that's all. Oh, that is all? Oh, George. Yeah? You decided I could have a drink of water? Oh, I decide more than that, George. Oh, what? I like you very much. Maybe I get two Cuba Libras, we sit here and... And talk about us, eh? Come here, baby. See? Mm. You do like me, don't you? Mm. You understand very well. Oh, Rosa, you're beautiful. Oh, yeah, yeah. Why don't you bring those Cuba Libras and we'll talk about us? See? I will be back a moment. Sure, baby, you'll be back in a moment. But I'm afraid you'll have to drink two Cuba Libras alone. Brooksy. Hey, Brooksy, wake up. Brooksy! Senor Valentine. Hey, what is this? Where's Miss Brooks? My name is Simon. Please do not be upset, Senor Valentine. Your Miss Brooks is quite all right. Well, where is she? There have been some strange things going on in Havana, Senor. My employer thought it best that we prevented another incident. Yeah? I suppose your employer's name is Miguel. Miguel? Oh, no, Senor. His name is Santos Olego. Sant... Now, wait a minute. Where's Miss Brooks? At Senor Olego's estate. She is quite safe. We were about to look for you. You know, Simon, that's a very pretty story, but I don't happen to believe you. You do not have to, Senor Valentine, but if you wish, I will take you to Senor Olego's home, and you will find that your Miss Brooks is there and quite safe. I had a deal like that before. Okay, we'll find out. How? What are you going to do, Senor Valentine? You'll see. And incidentally, Simon, I've got a gun here, and I suggest you sit right where you are and don't move. Very well, Senor. As you wish. Oh, operator... Would you know how to call the home of a Senor Santos Arlego? You would, eh? Well, suppose you do it, and right now. Thanks. I can see you do not believe me, Senor Valentine. <laughs> now, where have I heard those words before? I beg your pardon? Nothing, Skipper. Simple assignment, isn't it? Oh, hello. Let me speak to Senor Santos Arlego, please. I'm what? Oh, Senor Arlego. Well, this is George Valentine. Do you happen to know a Simon? He's one of your... What? Miss Brooks is there with you? <laughs> you see, I was telling the truth, senor. Yeah. Yeah, I see. All right, Orlego. I'll have Simon bring me out there. Right away. Uh, 
Brooksy. Brooksy, are you all right? Of course, George. I'm perfectly all right. Oh, thank goodness for that. I've been worried... Say, Senor Valentine, your fears were quite groundless. We were simply protecting Miss Brooks. Yeah, but why? Why? I would tell you. As simply as possible. I have a fairly large stock of very fine tobacco. I know. There are two people who would like to buy it. One is Senor Moore, whom you represent. The other is a person named uh, Ran Hobart. Well, now, you seem to have the facts down pat. Of course he has, George. He's been explaining the whole thing to me. Well, then suppose you explain the whole thing to me, too. Or My go... boy, I should be happy to. You see, I have been through revolutions, violence in this country. I'm a peaceful man. I do not like that sort of thing. I have seen what you call gangsters try to take over this country. So? As I said, I am a peaceful man. I don't like bloodshed. If I hold the auction tomorrow, I am quite sure that that is what would happen. So, the whole thing's off, huh? We've made a trip down here to Havana for no good reason. No, 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 George. Let him tell you. Okay, go ahead. I can't let down the man who hired me, you know. Oh, you will not be letting him down if he goes. In fact, you will be doing him a service. Now, if my guess is correct, Senor Moore allowed you to bid not more than $85,000 on this lot of tobacco. That is correct? You know everything, don't you? Oh, I like your Senor Moore. I do not like this uh, Hubbard. So, the auction is off. And I will make a special concession to Senor Moore. I suppose you mean you'll sell him the tobacco at his price without an auction. See, si, without an auction. But for $70,000. If you will consider that a deal, I will draw the papers. Make that 65000 and it is a deal. But, George, Mr. Moore said... I don't care you... what Mr. Moore said, Angel. I'm making an offer. How about it, Orlego? Yeah. I did not expect to run into this resistance, but... As I said, I do not like that. It's a deal, then? See, si, see, si, we make a deal. I have the contracts here. We will fill in the amount. You will sign for Senor Moore and uh, give me his check. And then we are finished. Uh, Senor Olega, you have made the transaction? Si, Simon, si. And this man has practically cheated me out of $5,000, but... Uh, then perhaps you will wish to change your mind about sending Senor Moore these special cigars, as I suggested? No, 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 no. He's all right. Uh... I must be, as they say in the status, uh, the United States, uh, a good sport. Senor Valentine. Yeah? Simon here suggested that on the completion of this transaction, I send Senor Moore uh, four boxes of fine cigars, uh, my own manufacture. I still wish to do so. Uh huh. Just to uh, make him jealous, huh? <laughs> No, 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 not exactly like that. But uh, we are friendly people in Cuba. I, I like to do this. Will you take the cigar Simon has brought to your Senor Moore, please, with my compliments? Oh, sure, sure. I'd be glad to. Santos Claros, huh? I've seen your brand in the States. Gracias, Senor Valentine. Now, I will have the contract drawn up, and we will complete our business. You and... will be sure to give Senor Moore the cigars? Oh, yeah, sure, of course. Outside of an unpleasant incident or two, this has been an easy way to earn a fee, Brooksy. Yes, George. Look, you better call the airport and make a reservation for Miami as soon as possible. And let's just hope that never again will we have to meet anyone from Calle Reposo. George. Yeah, Angel? It doesn't seem possible. What does not seem possible? Well, Mr. Moore told us the assignment would take about 48 hours, and it has. Not much more than that, anyway. Yeah, I know. And it's all over. And you get a nice fee, maybe even enough to... Put a down payment on a piece of good jewelry. What and... makes you think it's over? Well, isn't it? We made the trip. You bought the tobacco Mr. Moore wanted. You have the contract in your pocket. And I'm bringing him four boxes of Santos Alego's best cigars at the suggestion of his man, Simon. Yes, isn't it wonderful? The job's done. Not quite. Oh, now, what do you mean, not quite? I... Oh, I beg your pardon. I guess I wasn't looking where I was going. I'm... It's all right, lady. It's all right. It was my fault. Don't worry about it, Busty. Here we are, Moore's office. Let's go in and finish this up as fast as possible. But, George... Oh, nobody in his outer office today, so let's barge right in. Well, all right, George. Well, hello, Mr. Moore. Well, hello, Valentine. Say, you really took care of your assignment in a hurry, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, I don't like to waste time, Mr. Moore, any more than you do. Well, what do you mean? I... <laughs> told you it could take at least 48 hours, more if necessary. Well, it wasn't very much more, was it, Mr. Moore? No, no, you've done wonderfully well. I guess I owe you something back on the expense account. Oh, nonsense, nonsense. You got the signed contract? Uh, yes, I did. Oh, uh, say, by the way, uh, Olego told me that he'd sent me four boxes of his best cigars. <laughs> Just to make you jealous, I suppose. You bring them with you? Yeah, yeah, sure, of course. Oh, I wouldn't forget them. 
Here you are, Mr. Moore. Well, fine, fine. It's nice of you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I guess your job is done, isn't it, George? Not quite, Angel. Pardon me a moment, Mr. Moore. What, what do you mean? Okay, come on in, officer. Right. What, what, say, what is this? What, what's going on here? All right, officer, there's your man. And he has the stuff right on his desk. You'd better put him under arrest. George, right. what do you mean, Mr. Moore hired Sure you? he did, to be a fall guy. All right, Mr. Moore. I guess we just better snap these bracelets on, in case you get any ideas. No, I'll see And you. I'll just take those four boxes of cigars. They ought to send you up for quite a long time. Come on. But George, I don't understand. I don't blame I... you, Angel. I just had a hunch and it paid off. I'll tell you about it after I've had it that. If a sluggish, choked-up motor is making driving a chore rather than a pleasure for you, then now's the time to get the gas with all eight Chevron Supreme. Balance blended for peak performance under all driving conditions, Chevron Supreme gasoline gives you not one, not two, but all eight high-performance qualities. Quick starting, fast warm-up, smooth acceleration, anti-knock, vapor lock prevention, area blending, economy mileage, and full power. Next time you need gas, pull in and fill up with Chevron Supreme gasoline at any standard station or independent Chevron gas station where they say and mean... We take better care of your car. George. Uh, George. Rosa. Hmm? Oh, Rosa. Oh, you're a good kid, Rosa. But I shouldn't have kissed you because... George. Uh, George uh, Ballantyne. Ah, uh, oh, why? Oh, Oh, Brooksy, I, I was asleep, I guess. Yes, I guess. And with very nice dreams, too, about Rosa. Oh, Rosa? Who's Rosa? Hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, I remember. All right, so you kissed her. Or at least you dreamed you did. But tell me something. Anything, Angel. What? How could you have Mr. Moore arrested just for getting four boxes of cigars from Havana? Oh, that. Yeah, well, they were cigars, all right. But the cigar part was only on the outside. Well, isn't it always? Uh-uh. I was sort of suspicious when Orlego and his pal Simon insisted I bring four boxes of Santos Claras back to Moore. Didn't seem necessary. So when we got in, I had them analyzed at the lab. And? Just happened to be tobacco wrappers with the inside full of half one. Worth almost as much as I paid for the tobacco. Oh, then Mr. Moore really is crooked. Ah, oh, yes, indeed. Very profitable sideline. But Havana is so nice. And we wouldn't have gone there if it hadn't been for him. Ah, that's right, Angel. And you made a lot of money on the deal. Even enough to... to have a honeymoon in Havana. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. And if you know any deserving young kids who want to go there and have it financed, let me know, will you? Oh, <laughs> George. Tonight's transcribed adventure of George Valentine has been brought to you by Standard Oil Company of California on behalf of independent Chevron gas stations and standard stations throughout the West. Robert Bailey is starred as George with Virginia Gregg as Brooksy. Let George Do It was written by Lloyd London and directed by Kenneth Webb. Chester Stratton was heard as Moore, Gigi Pearson as Rosa, Tony Barrett as Miguel, Ted DeCorsia as Santos, and Jack Lloyd as Simon. The music is composed and presented by Gaylord Carter, your announcer, John Heaston. Listen again next week, same time, same station, to Let George Do It. Let George Do It is heard overseas through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. <laughs>